Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to set up an oxyfuel station for welding operations. And I'm also going to demonstrate a surface weld in the flat position just to get us going for our first project. And this is what my work area is going to look like. I have both of my gas tanks secured to a welding cart, and I also have a cutting table that I'm going to be using to support my workpiece as I weld on it. If we take a closer look at the compressed gas cylinders that are on the welding cart, you can see that they're secured in place using a length of chain for each cylinder. If you're not at the shop, if you're doing this at home, you want to make sure that your cylinders are also secured in place and they're not going to fall over during use. I want to point out that the gases I'm going to be using are oxygen and acetylene. And we can see here on the labels that have been stuck to the sides of the cylinders. I want to point this out because typically oxygen cylinders are painted green and fuel cylinders are painted red. But in this case, both cylinders are two-toned, blue at the bottom, yellow on top. So it's important to know how to identify the gases you're going to be working with before you hook everything up and find out that something's wrong. Here's a close-up of the regulator that's attached to the oxygen cylinder. So on top we have the gas pressure and on the bottom we have the working pressure. Notice how this regulator has the pressure gauges stacked one on top of another. You can also find other regulators out in industry where the pressure gauges are side by side, but nonetheless, they display the same information. And if you don't know how to identify which one is the gas cylinder pressure and which one is the working pressure, all you have to do is just take one at a time, follow the numbers around the pressure gauge, take note of which gauge displays higher sets of numbers. The working pressure is always gonna have the lower set of numbers, and the cylinder pressure gauge is going to have the higher set of numbers. So in this case, the top gauge is showing us the pressure for the cylinder. So as I open up the cylinder, you'll notice the needle start to move. It's also important to remember that when we're using oxy fuel to weld or cut, the oxygen cylinder should be opened up all the way. Now it's time to set the working pressure. The working pressure is the gas that's going through the lines and into your torch. To adjust the working pressure, you're going to want to find the adjustment knob or the adjustment screw on your regulator and rotate it clockwise until you have reached the desired pressure setting. Now let's flip over to the regulator for acetylene. You'll notice that the pressure gauges on this regulator are also stacked one on top of another, but you'll also find some out there where they're side by side. And the same concept can be used with the settling regulators when trying to identify which pressure gauge belongs to the cylinder and which pressure gauge belongs to the working pressure. You'll start at zero PSI on one side of the regulator and count the numbers all the way up for both pressure gauges. And the pressure gauge that has the higher set of numbers is going to display the pressure of the tank. And the pressure gauge with the lower set of numbers is going to be the one to display your working pressure. So in this case, the pressure gauge that's on top is going to be displaying the pressure of the cylinder. Now this is where it's kind of a bad example to use here because someone was already using this cylinder beforehand. So the pressure gauge that is for the cylinder pressure is already giving us a reading because it wasn't properly shut off. It's also important to note here that a settling cylinder should only be opened up approximately one half turn to one full turn. And now it's time to set the working pressure. And the working pressure can be set the same way that it's done for oxygen. You'll find the adjustment knob or the adjustment screw, and you'll rotate it clockwise until you reach the desired working pressure. After you've done that, you want to go ahead and make sure that you have enough length in your welding cables so that way you can reach the workplace without any problems, but also in a way to prevent kinks in your lines, that way you're preventing any disruption of the flow of gas. Now before I get to welding, let's talk about some items that are going to be required on top of your normal PPE. You're going to want a pair of nice thick gloves. I recommend some stick welding gloves because the temperatures of these flames is really high. You're also going to need a wrench, either the exact size for the fittings of your torch or a 10-way wrench. That way if there are any leaks or loose connections, you can go ahead and tighten those up.
you're going to want a set of slip joint pliers or in this case i've got a pair of vice grips the metal that we're going to be working with is going to become extremely hot after welding and you're going to need a safe way in order to pick it up and move it around whether that's taking it to the quench tank or someplace else and you're also going to need a tool that's used to light the torch this is called a striker and if I remove one arm from the enclosed portion of the striker box, you'll see that there's something screwed on to the very tip. This is called the flint tip. This is what creates the sparks as we scratch the flint tip against the striking surface within the striker box itself. When using this item, you want to make sure to apply pressure to the arm that has the flint tip and then strike it across. So one more time, that's applying pressure and striking it across. Now as far as eye protection goes for oxyfuel operations, if you want to use a welding helmet, that's completely fine. However, you want to make sure that you can adjust the filter shade lens to approximately a number 5 shade. Or you can use a set of welding goggles that have a fixed shade of a number 5 setting. In this case, I'm using a pair of welding glasses that's made by one of the larger welding manufacturers. This happens to be a number 5 shade as well. Now let's talk about lighting the torch because this is very crucial. You always want to use the striker from the side. So that is the side of the welding tip. You can light the torch from either side, left or right, whichever one's more comfortable to you. You never want to light the torch from right in front of the tip. This is going to lead to an accumulation of soot within the striker, which over time can render the striker inoperable or you can do some other type of damage which will result in the tool not being able to be used anymore. So remember, light the torch from the side, never in front. Now let's take a closer look at the torch body and the gas lines. This is going to be important when remembering how to correctly light the torch. You have two gas lines, one for oxygen, one for your fuel gas. Typically oxygen is green and the fuel gas is red, but it's not always like that. So here are some other ways in order to identify which gas line provides which gas. So we can look at the torch. We can see if there is any identifying symbols. On this torch, there is an O and an F. The O lets us know that that side is for oxygen, and the F is letting us know that that side is for the fuel gas. This is going to let us know which valve to open in order to set the flow for each gas. We can also take a look at the fittings that connect the hoses to the torch body itself. Taking a look at the fitting on the right for the oxygen line, we'll see that all sides are relatively smooth. And if we look at the fitting on the left for the fuel gas line, you'll notice that there are notches all the way around the fitting. So if you see a fitting that has notches all the way around, this is a universal indicator for the location of a gas line. Now, in order to light the torch, we have to open up the fuel gas first. So we're going to rotate that adjustment knob slightly counterclockwise, about a one quarter turn, just enough to get the gas flowing and out the tip of the torch. After you light that, then we'll start adding our oxygen by rotating that adjustment knob counterclockwise. So one more time, we're going to open up that knob that controls the fuel gas. Just about one quarter turn to get the gas flowing. Then we're going to take our striker and strike off to the side of the welding tip. This is going to ignite our flame. From here, we're going to add a little bit more acetylene. And once we get our flame just right, we're going to start opening up the adjustment valve for oxygen and introduce more oxygen until we've reached a neutral flame. Let's see that with a better point of view. So again, we're going to open up our fuel gas just slightly. We're going to strike and ignite the flame from the side of the welding tip. And you can see a lot of soot and smoke coming out from the flame right now. We want to adjust and increase our acetylene flow to decrease the amount of soot that is being produced. And we want a more aggressive flame. Once we get to this point, we're going to start adding oxygen in order to achieve our neutral flame. But before getting to a neutral flame, I'm going to stop at a carburizing flame. That way you can take a look at that flame first. And you can see a carburizing flame here. Also take note of what it sounds like.
And this is what our neutral flame is going to look like. And also pay attention to how it sounds. Now let's take a look at that process one more time, except now we're going to do so with the help of a shade lens. So as I ignite the flame, I'm going to increase my acetylene to get that aggressive looking flame and kind of decrease the amount of soot that's coming out. And then I'm going to introduce oxygen and slowly increase that. But before getting to a neutral flame, I'm going to stop at a carburizing flame. That way you can take a look at that flame first. And you can see a carburizing flame here. And now I'm going to increase my oxygen to the point where I can obtain a neutral flame. And you can see that here. And I'm adding oxygen so that way I can change the flame from a neutral flame into an oxidizing flame. But it looks like the tip that I'm using is a little too big for the pressure settings that I'm using with oxygen. So I can't really get into an oxidizing flame right now, but just know that an oxidizing flame would have a much higher pitched hissing noise than that of a neutral flame. And the flame would also change colors from somewhat of a light blue to a very light purple. And now I'm going to put all that together as I get ready to weld. And you can see that I've got my filler rod here. I'm using ER70S-6. I'm using a 332nd inch diameter filler rod. And when we're using OxyFuel to weld, we're going to use a slight push angle. So how I'm going to go about doing this is I'm going to keep that tip off of the surface of the metal. So we want that heat to do all the work for us. We're not shoving the tip against the metal, trying to melt it that way. So we're gonna keep that inner blue cone just off the surface of the metal. And as, as we start melting the surface, we, wanna, we want to establish a weld puddle before we do anything. So we're gonna establish a weld puddle and then we're gonna start trying to push it along the surface of the workpiece. And as I'm doing so, I'm going to slowly dip the filler rod into the weld puddle. And as I build it up, I'm going to keep pushing it forward and keep dipping and keep pushing up until the point where I'm finished with the weld. Here's that same weld, but now this time we're going to be using a shade lens to take a look at it. And I'm also giving you a different point of view. And so you're probably noticing that before I'm even welding, I'm running the torch across the surface of of the workpiece. And all I'm doing here is just preheating uh, with the area that I'm going to be welding. This particular piece of steel was out all night, so it was pretty cold when I got in this morning. And I'm just adding some preheat to it. That way the weld pool is a little bit more fluid and it's a little bit easier to control and push across the surface of this piece.
And that's essentially how you create surface welds. Now let's talk about how to shut down oxyfuel operations. So we're kind of going to go in the reverse of how we opened up the cylinders. So first, we're going to close the cylinder. And instead of rotating that adjustment knob clockwise, all right, remember that increases the working pressure. We want to back that out all the way. So we're going to instead turn it counterclockwise all the way until we can't turn it anymore. And then we're going to open up that oxygen valve on the torch body to bleed the lines. And then we're going to follow that exact same procedure for acetylene. We're going to close the cylinder valve and then we're going to back out that adjustment knob for the working pressure all the way. And then we're going to open up the acetylene valve on the torch body to bleed the lines. Once you've done that, ensure that your valves on the torch body are closed and then go ahead and clean things up.